Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jamil Andolini. I'm the editor-in-chief of Politico Europe. And I'm very honored to be interviewing today remotely, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, the right-hand man of the president of Ukraine, uh, Vladimir Zelensky. The, the man's name is Andrei Yermak. And uh, it's a great honor. We're going to be talking about the war. We're going to be talking about uh, the possible formula for peace and uh, what the rest of the world can do and can contribute to end this horrific conflict that we have uh, been watching for far too long already. So, Mr. Yermak, uh, if you can hear me, there you are, sir. Good to meet you. Uh, and there, just bear with us because there is a slight delay. So you will notice that uh, I will ask a question, there will be a delay, and then uh, uh, Mr. Yermak will respond. Um, but just bear with us. Uh, the, for obvious reasons, there, are, uh, there needs to be um, this uh, technical delay. So we're talking about, hopefully, the possibility of peace. Can you tell us what is the formula that Ukraine would like to see for peace? What are the requirements from Ukraine, Kiev's perspective, for there to be peace in Ukraine? Dear Mr. Anderlini, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you for having me here. Yesterday was another terrible day for our country. A helicopter crashed close to the King Garden in the town of Bravara near Kyiv. People died. Interior Minister Denis Monastirsky was among them. Denis and his staff flew to the front. So all those who died and their injured in bravery are victims of this terrible war. Every day it takes more and more lives. This must be stopped. Unfortunately, the traditional way to achieve peace in the case of Russia is unacceptable. Its leadership is neither trustworthy nor able to conduct a dialogue. So we have to follow an alternative path. President Vladimir Zelensky presented his idea for this as 10 points roadmap in his speech to the G19 powers in Bali. The other day, he, he and First Lady Elena Zelenska also mentioned the peace formula here in Davos. Now I will dwell on the in more detail. This plan is based on the principles of United Nations chapter and the norms of international law. I'll point out right away, the steps the peace formula provides are not aimed in the restoring the status quo. Our goals is to build a new order. The one that will guarantee security and justice for the entire international community. So, nuclear and radiation security is one. Nuclear blackmail poses a critical challenges for both our country and the wild world. Threats of using nuclear weapons against a state that renounced them 20 year, 28 eight years old ago jeopardized the non-proliferation regime. It may encourage other countries to build their own nuclear arsenals as the only defense against potential aggression. So we need effective mechanism to prevent this. International cooperation with Russia on nuclear energy should be determined because of the systematic attacks on nuclear facilities in Ukraine. The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant captured by the Russians in March must be immediately returned to Ukrainian control. Securing the other should be a top priority. Another focus is food security. Expanding our initiative on the safe transportation of grain and foodstuff from Ukraine ports 
also known as a Black Sea Grain Initiative, and ensuring its continued indefinitely would be uh, safeguard against further attempts to the weaponized hunger. The Grain from Ukraine program launched on the anniversary of the Holodomor is another contribution of ours to international food security in Blade by the introduction of grain corridors. Fully 40 countries have already joined the initiatives. The European Union and the United Nations supporting it. Despite the war, Ukraine is making every effort to fight world hunger. Currently, 82 countries are facing acute food shortage. As part of the program, we aim to help at least 5 million people in need of food by summer. It is possible that the DIN framework of humanitarian supplies of up of to 10 ships per month. Ukraine managed to keep high agriculture production volume under extreme conditions. So with appropriate support and a native reconstruction, we will be able to offer much more to the world than peace comes. A third priority is the energy security. On fossil fuel, we have limited Russian ability to use energy as geopolitical weapon. Europe has significantly reduced dependence on Russian gas and set an oil price cap. However, with level of sanctions against Russia energy, carriers in insufficient. Gazprom continue to finance this war against Ukraine, but Gazprom Bank is still connected to SWIFT, the global money transfer system. The possibilities of limiting Russian oil profits had also not yet been exhausted. Even in these funds keep the Kremlin war machine running. On top of that, Ukrainian energy infrastructure needs to be restored and protected from further destruction. We need to strengthen the air and anti-missile defense of critical facilities. Energy terror in all of its form must be ended. President Zelensky has called on the United Nations to adopt a resolution to achieve the goal. A fourth aim is environmental safety. And the rental damage that Ukraine has suffered as a result of the war exceeds $46 billion. Nearly a third of our territory, it's literally did the mines and explodes. Huge forest areas are burned, causing mass flora and fauna exterminants. The volume of the uh, pollutants in the air has already exceeded and averages European countries' annual emissions. The Russian ecocide in Ukraine is a threat of planetary scale. This is why at the COP27 climate summit, we propose to create a global platform to assess war-related climate and environmental damage. Points five and point six. Implementation of the UN chapter, restoration of the territorial integrity of Ukraine and the world order. What is the withdrawal of Russian troops from all international recognized Ukrainian territories and a full cessation of hostilities? Failure to the full these conditions is a direct path to the disbanding the UN and the modern international legal order. Our common goal is to prevent this scenario. The Russian troops must be withdrawn regardless of the Kremlin wills. Ukraine needs effective means of coercion. So military technical assistance should continue to ensure our superiority over the aggressors 
and strengthening the protection of the civil object and its infrastructure. This is in particular should be facilitated by declaration on the air shield of, of, for Ukraine. According to the document, the guarantor states would undertake to help its, its creating a modern multi-level air and missiles defense system. Next point, security guarantees. Peace is not just the absence of fightings. Peace is confidence based on justice. If these criteria are not made, we will simply have the war put on hold, the interbellum to zero. The aggressor states is the only one that benefits in this case. It will get a break to regroup before the next gamble. To prevent this, we propose the Kyiv Security Compact. It's developed by the International Expert Group, jointly chaired by NATO's former Secretary General, Anders Fogh Rasmussen and me. Focus eight, liberating captives. It's one of the most painful points. We must get back both the prisoners of war and deported people. Filtration camps operate in the most occupied territories. Along with mass execution, these instruments of forced deportation are tool of genocide. According to the various estimates, from the 900,000 to 1,600,000 Ukrainians have already been deported. We are often taken to the isolated region of Siberia and the Far East. Among them are tens of the thousands of children. In the 21st century, Russia reinvented concentration camp. There were prisoners who were subjected to systematic physical and moral torture. The international organizations can protect the prisoners of war and the civilian captives of Russia. So we believe a body capable of doing it should be created. We need to ensure that the all Kremlin's Ukrainian hostages return home. Here's come justice. We are registering already 80,000 crimes committed by the Russian survivors. A lot of work ahead for Ukrainian courts and the International Criminal Court. But to punish the Russian top officials for the primary crimes of aggression at the special international tribunal is needed. For all the destructions and incredible damage caused to Ukraine, Russia must also pay this money. We call on our partners to adopt changes to national legislation to confiscate assets and transfer them to compensation fund. The United Nations General Assembly has already agreed on concept of the compensation mechanism. It is also extremely important that G7 countries join the international agreement of creating the register of the damages and the compensation commission, which Ukraine will propose jointly with Netherlands. And finally, Confirmation in the end of the war. All these above mentioned steps should be integrated into the system of international documents and became the basis of new world security system. We expect that the nations that respect the principle of international law and care about world security will find this plan reasoned and logical. We would like each country to choose the points where they can demonstrate their geopolitical leadership and play a key role. Or you can support the plan as a while. President Zelensky said the time has come when global agreements should be made publicly. The age of silence, which brought humanity to the brink of global catastrophe must end. We need a secure world. Ladies and gentlemen, rejoice the peace in 
your homes. Yesterday, I lost colleagues and friends. I wish you never get a call like the one I got yesterday and thousands of Ukrainians get daily. Your dearest and nearest are gone. We're never come, coming back. For their sake and for the sake of our common future, we must achieve a just and reliable peace. Thank you very much. Slava Ukraini. Thank you very much for that very comprehensive uh, explanation of uh, Ukraine's expectations for how this war, the terms on which this war uh, can end. Can I, can I ask you as a follow-up um, whether you think that what you have outlined now and what President Zelensky has outlined is likely to be accepted by Vladimir Putin at any time in the near future? Uh, do you think this war can end in 2023? Is it a possibility? First of all, we are doing uh, all our best, and I think that all our friends and partners will doing all the best to finish this terrible war in this year. All Ukrainians hope that it will be Victorian year and the year of our joy and victory with our partners, with our friends, and the all democracy and free world. Uh, about the position of the Russia, you know, the most important that uh, the world, the mainly countries will support this peaceful plan. Because if Russia will be isolated, if uh, the special resolution will be voted, very soon, and this resolution, uh, uh, which support about supporting uh, by the big number of the countries, I think this is the most important. This is change the uh, position in the in the world. In parallel, the same with uh, our success in the front line. I'm not waiting that by their own will, Russia will accept this plan. If it will be so, it's happened already. If it will be so, never happened this invasion. But Russia already feel that they not able to fight against all free world. I can say that Ukraine, by the brave and so heroic Ukrainians' fightings, show to the all the world that lights and good and democracy and the freedom, it's 100% uh, will be the winner of this war. And I'm sure that these principles, these positions already understand and the Russian leaders. Thank you very much. You make a very important point there, I think, about the need for support for Ukraine in order for Ukraine to be victorious in this war, to win this war. I wonder if you worry, and if President Zelensky worries, about the West faltering, its support failing or, or falling. In particular, I'm interested in your position or your, your perception of Germany. Do you consider Germany to be a reliable ally? And there are people laughing in the room. <laughs> Uh, you know, 
First of all, uh, I don't see that the uh, the support for Ukraine uh, it's changed and not we uh, we see that this support and this help strengthening. We see how new partners uh, show the uh, how important to them uh, to not just support. And they show and openly saying that for them, it's important that Ukraine win. They believe uh, in our victory. And said very important phrase for all Ukrainians. We do everything which you need and give you everything which you need not to, to survive, not to exist, but to win. It's important. Uh, if we are talking about Germany, first of all, Germany played very important role uh, that Ukraine is already candidate to European uh, Union. Germany it's already done a lot of to support. Of course, it's not enough. But so you know, sometimes some 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 things happen very quickly. Sometimes we need time. We need uh, more conversations, more consultations. But in general, I believe, I hope that first of all, the German society in the beginning of this terrible war, and you remember the hundred thousands. Uh, people in the streets of German city. I know that German society, ma majority of the society support Ukraine and support strong uh, aids, military aids to Ukraine. And I think, I hope that we can see in the very near future, the uh, realizations of this support of Germany society, of Germany politics in uh, additional packages of so important weapons which need Ukraine to win this war. The French president, Emmanuel Macron, has said that uh, Ukraine is decades away from joining the European Union. Uh, he is also um, made something of a show of uh, diplomacy with Russia. So I have two questions. One is, do you agree with him that it will take many decades for Ukraine to be able to join the European Union? And secondly, do you feel that Macron's diplomacy has been helpful for Ukraine or maybe perhaps counterproductive, not helpful, even damaging to Ukraine's position. First of all, uh, to us, uh, President Macron saying in other things. Plus, in the last time, we see by real steps how France to support and help Ukraine. I hope that it will be continued. The second. I'm sure that Ukraine will be member of European uh, Union very soon. And I'm just not uh, thinking about years. I think it's happened more soon than uh, uh, many politics just uh, thinking for today. Next, I think that all diplomacy not help not just diplomacy uh, from uh, France or for some another country, because happened this invasion, because started this war. It's mean, and I started the, this phrase, uh, my speech, that for the current political leaders to Russia, it's not for the form of the political dialogue. It's not for diplomacy. I think it's uh, it's impossible to talk about it. Let's uh, you can see what happened in Dnipro. You can see what happened in another Ukrainian city. 
You can see what now happened in Solidar, in Bakhmut, in occupied territories. I think that uh, it's uh, absolutely cr concrete answer that diplomacy not work with the Russia. That's why we need to use all strongest instruments uh, to make the influence to the Russia through the different uh, directions. Of course, the first, it's our uh, possibility to win in the front line in the battlefield. The second, it's necessary to continue pressing through the uh, sanction policy. I can say that, uh, and we all, all the time discussed and continue to discuss with our partners about that it's necessary to increase to increase the sanctions. We're waiting for the new packages. We know that it's working, work continue and the, uh, uh, by our partners in United States and Great Britain and Europeans and others. We're waiting for the new package. It's not enough because this war is continue. The military machine is working. And you know that the group uh, which we are created with uh, uh, Michael McFall, it's already issued 10 documents with very detailed, very concrete recommendation which sanctions we need. I'm sure that it's uh, necessary to very seriously thinking about the uh, visa sanctions for the people, for the soldiers who is fighting in Ukraine, who is coming as advisors, including their family, because the people who is come and who is openly talking how it's necessary to kill civilians, to rape, to torture, I am sure that you need not in Europe, in United States, in other countries, these people who is living in mentality of the killers. And of course, it's necessary to strengthening and uh, to work for the and implement the security guarantees to Ukraine. Because today it's true, Ukraine is the best uh, image maker uh, of the free world, the best image maker of the uh, freedom in the world. And uh, we're happy that and uh, we, we can show and give these feelings to the uh, world that it's impossible not to pray. That our, our, our value, it's uh, uh, today, it's absolutely understandable for the people that we are fighting, not for just for uh, our value. We fighting for the universe value, for the uh, real free world. And this is why the people in the, in the world so support us. So I've, I've asked you about Germany and I've asked you about France. I'd like to ask you who you consider, who Ukraine considers to be its best friend, its best friend here in Davos. Uh, you know that uh, we are very all our friends. We appreciate the help and support of all our friends. But of course, you know that if we are back to the uh, just the concrete figures, of course, the biggest uh, supporter and the biggest partners by by the figures of AIDS and financial and military. Of course, it's United States. But once again, we appreciate all our friends. And it's a very important because some countries give to us practically everything uh, which we have. They over 50% of their military equipments uh, give to Ukraine. And we are never forget, Ukrainians never forget about all help, all 
uh, support which we are receiving uh, during this terrible, practically one year of the war. And once again, I am absolutely sure that it will be not just our victory, it will be joint victory of all our friends and partners. The different continent. When, when you talk about victory, can you imagine victory that does not include Crimea as part of Ukraine? No. It's absolutely unacceptable. Uh, our victory, and I'd like to say that we are very happy that we have same uh, formula of victory and same goal of this uh, war uh, with our partners. It's absolutely 100% back to the full uh, territorial integrity in uh, internationally recognized border of Ukraine, including Donbass and including Crimea. But, but isn't it true that you have received some pressure from the partners uh, and friends in Europe in particular, but even somewhat in the United States, to negotiate and to consider the possibility that uh, parts of the Donbass and, and maybe even Crimea would not uh, be returned to Crimea. That you have faced some pressure from allies. Is that not true? I can answer it in such a way. It's impossible to press to, to us and everybody who is well known President Zelensky, his team already know that it's impossible to press. No, I can't confirm that anybody just tried to press to us. <laughs> Good answer. Um, I'm very interested. I lived in China for 22 years, and I'm very interested in your position towards China because China has been quite supportive of Russia in this conflict, but from my understanding, uh, Ukraine has not criticized China or has, has maybe tried not to offend China. Can you talk a little bit about China's position and, and how Kiev sees China in this conflict? I maybe give uh, myself opportunity to not agree with you. Russia not so support Russia as uh, not uh, to support Ukraine. And we are working and hope that this situation will be changed. Uh, we see the opportunity. And first of all, uh, we can see this opportunity through the peaceful formula of President Zelensky, because as minimum two points, it's a very, we know that it's a very important for the China. And we hope that China will very seriously uh, check these, our proposals and uh, possible to see their uh, participations and maybe leadership in some, of, in some of these points. If you remember the first lady, it's personally uh, to uh, deliver these uh, documents to the uh, leaders who is presented in Davos uh, conference, including uh, one of the officials from the Chinese delegations. We hope and waiting for the reactions of China. Hmm. What does Ukraine need now from the West, United States, Europe, the, the collective West? What, what are you most in need of from, from uh, Europe and uh, America now? You know, our request, it's uh, the same. 
We need weapons to win Russia in the battlefield. And uh, today we have excellent uh, communications which were built during this period, this uh, practically one year. Then our partners practically for each day exactly know how to change the situations, what we need, uh, what we really need for today, what our plans, it means that these communications now, the, all our strategic partners in a very high level, but if in general, we need more weapons, we need heavy, heavy uh, weapons, we need tanks, we need, we need our jet, we need long distance uh, artillery, but all this, uh, 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 request all this necessity exactly know our partners. I've been speaking with some of the members of the Ukrainian parliament who are here in Davos uh, again, and some of them have said to me that if the United States had been more bold uh, and other countries had been more uh, less timid, less scared, uh, and supplied some of those heavy weapons earlier in the conflict, say in April, if they'd given HIMARS in April or tanks in the summer, that Russia would already have been beaten. Do you think that's true? Nobody know what happened if something happened in another way. We, I'm realist, I know uh, what's happened in reality, but I very strongly believe that we have, now it's critical times to give to Ukraine everything to win this war. And so let's working on it. And I believe that, you know, uh, we crossed this way from beginning, then uh, somebody, some politics, some, uh, some people give to us in the beginning three days. Then it was a couple of the months. Now we show that we are able not just defend, we are able to win this war. I'm sure that the mostly our partners now sure about our victory. And uh, why they said that we give to you, to your country, everything which you need. But time, it's lives of our people. Times, it's destroying of our cities. Times, it's uh, blackout in our country. Times, it's the people without water, without water, without electricity. And this is happened today, every minute. It's mean that how said our presidents, now every second costs a lot of. It's mean that it's not time to delay. It's, it's time to make a real step and really to win this war to end and to back the real peace and security system in the Europe, in the world. Because without stopping of this war, Nobody in our planet can feel and can live safe. I'm sure about it. Do you expect a further escalation from Russia? Do you think that Putin will uh, draft, enlist many more, more men to come fight in your territory? And do you think he could potentially, if he feels he's losing even worse, do you think he could use nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction? You know, it's difficult to prognose, to make a prognosis uh, for the uh, person and for the country uh, who is during long period of time just uh, uh, 
for their international colleagues said, we never planning to invite to Ukraine. Uh, we never uh, uh, need to occupy uh, 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 another territories. It's difficult. It's uh, what I'm really know that of course we can see, and we very concerned about the new attacks and new operations uh, from the Russian side, and of course. Uh, we are very attentively through the information of our intelligence, of intelligence of our partners. And this is on the, uh, we using to make our plans. And what is why we are talking this, uh, our friends, our partners, that uh, we, all of us understand who will win this war. But at the same time, we understand that we have another battles and we need to win these battles. That's why we are talking about this, the, these weapons and we are talking about everything which we need to win these battles. And of course, we are very seriously looking what happened about these mobilizations, potential mobilizations in Russia and uh, everything about their preparation, about their plan uh, to once again, to continue this attack to the civilian infrastructure and to prepare the, some new operations against Ukraine. We're almost out of time, but I want to ask you, if, if Russia really loses uh, this war, do you think that Vladimir Putin will be killed or will he be deposed? Uh, and I want to ask you as well a rumor that has circulated for quite a long time. Do you think Vladimir Putin is very sick? Uh, I don't mean sick in the head, uh, but uh, sick uh, uh, with cancer or with um, Parkinson's disease or, or something like this, which has been rumored uh, quite widely? First of all, I once again not agree with you. I, 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 I just not thinking if Ukraine win. I'm sure that Ukraine will win. It's first of all. The second, I have two diploma. I'm the international lawyers and interpreter. I have no diploma of doctors. I can't make any diagnosis, not to this man, not to the uh, Russia for the country. Uh, if seriously, uh, you know, uh, we definitely win this war. And of course, this victory will be make a big influence to the all Russian society. And of course, uh, you know, all barbers, all uh, people who is, uh, make so terrible crimes and uh, kill the people, created the concentrated camp. We remember the history. It's always have very big, changes of this society and uh, this is but uh, uh, it's it's absolutely logical i don't know i'm sure that you know not existing uh, the uh, people who can be for the not limited time but uh, you know i'm i'm not thinking now about it we are all of us, all Ukrainian nations, now concentrated for one goal, to win this war. And you can see how we united, how our society is united, you, around the presidents, around our army, around our military people. And we show to all the world how brave, how strong Ukrainians just you can imagine during just New Year's days, uh, Russia attacked and sent it and, uh, to us more than 100 missiles, rockets and drones. But the people not leave the city, the people stay. 
the people uh, just not looking that practically millions Ukrainians, not the normal conditions of the lives. They have not some time, some hours without light, without water, without warm. But we so much love our country. We so much proud uh, for our soldiers. We so proud that today we have so big support, historical, historical support and united uh, union around the Ukraine. And uh, we're so proud that in different cities of different continents, the people going to the Ukrainian flags, Ukrainian symbols, we feel how people around the world feel deeply everything which happened in Ukraine, how support, how hostess our refugees who is temporarily going and have to go uh, uh, well, from Ukraine. But we believe everybody return. We believe that we very soon win this war. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you for interesting questions. And thank you for auditorium for your attention. Mr. Yermak, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I hope to see you uh, soon in Ukraine when I interview uh, the president uh, in person. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Welcome, please. We're waiting for you. Thank you very much.